Tonight, the moment you've been waiting for, as we reveal the biggest secret of all, the true identity of the masked magician. Good evening, I'm Mitch Pileggi. Ever since we started giving away secrets, magicians have been outraged. They've demanded to know who is that masked man and why did he do it? We'll get ready. You're about to find out. For the first time, you will actually see our magician's face and hear him speak and learn the shocking truth about the man behind the mask. Some claim the masked magician is a world-famous illusionist. Others say he's merely an actor playing a part. A few even think that our magician is really a woman. Well, you keep right on guessing. But before his disguise comes off, our magician will expose the hidden secrets of magic's most dangerous illusions. The masked magician will reveal the incredible secrets of how to survive being burned alive, buried alive, and getting his head chopped off by the razor-sharp blade of a guillotine. It's time to get started. This magician begins with a death-defying escape called the Car Crush. All he needs is a 12,000-pound weight and a fine American-made automobile. As always, first we'll show you how the trick is performed, then we'll show you the secrets of how it's actually done. Get ready, race fans. It's time for Demolition Derby. Of course, he couldn't pull off this escape without the help of his beautiful assistants. Also made in America, and very well built. These are not his regular assistants, so we can show you their faces without fear of revealing the magician's true identity. At least not yet. These two pieces of rope will be used to secure the magician inside this solid steel restraint. His hands are looped through the ropes and separated by the steel bar, making it impossible for him to reach the knots. The ropes are wrapped around his body and tied beneath his waist. Next, the magician is placed inside a coroner's body bag. Pretty creepy. But at least we'll save ourselves some trouble if he doesn't make it. The bag with the magician inside is now placed on the back seat of the car. But he's not going for a ride. The door is closed and he has less than a minute to escape before the car is crushed beyond recognition. This is one continuous camera shot. There are no camera tricks in this or any other of tonight's illusions. There he is on the back seat. Looks like he's still kicking. The 12,000 pound weight is raised up above the car. As soon as it reaches a height of 25 feet, it will automatically be dropped. End of car, end of backseat driver. A camera inside the car records his struggle. Five seconds to go. Let's hope he gets out in time. Down it goes. Instant convertible. Uh-oh, no sign of the masked man. Magicians, break out the marshmallows. This guy's a goner. But we wouldn't kill him off yet. 
The show just started, and he still hasn't taken off his mask. So how did the masked magician avoid becoming a human paperweight? Here are the secrets. As the illusion begins, the magician is placed into the restraints to make his escape from the car appear impossible. So how is our magician able to break free? The trick is that there are two pieces of rope tied together with a thin thread, making them very easy to break apart. But how is our mystery man able to get out of the car before it's crushed? This part of the illusion takes split-second timing and some magical engineering. Once the magician is placed in the back seat, the audience is temporarily distracted by one of his lovely assistants. What a distraction. This is when the real magic takes place. A secret trigger is built into the car's back door. When the assistant slams it shut, the trigger springs the seat open. The body bag with our magician inside vanishes, while a duplicate body bag flips down from the back of the seat. There's no stopping the weight. If the seat doesn't drop down in time and release the magician, it's all over. Here's the view from under the car. As you can see, the trunk has been entirely removed. From this side angle, you can see how the mechanism works. That's where the duplicate body bag is hidden. And here's where the magician slides out. But how does he free himself from the body bag? There's a secret to that too. A Velcro opening hidden in the back of the bag that makes for a quick escape. Meanwhile, what about all that struggling going on inside the bag? Well, take a look. A foam rubber dummy complete with a motor, makes it appear as if our masked man is trying to escape from his bonds. As the camera moves around the car and peeks through the back window, we are actually looking at the motorized dummy in the body bag. The masked magician has already made his escape. While all this is happening, the assistants wheel over a specially designed hospital gurney. The magician crawls out from underneath the car and sneaks onto a secret shelf hidden in the bottom of the gurney. As the crane moves the six-ton weight into position, the masked man rides in style to safety. Perfect timing. Here's a slow motion replay of what happened to the dummy. Flat as a pancake and burnt to a crisp. Our magician strolls out like there's nothing to it. Anybody want to buy a used car? The mass magician will now attempt another dangerous illusion called the cremation. Check out the stainless steel incinerator. The heat inside will reach temperatures of over 3,000 degrees. No one could survive that blazing inferno. The magician enters and checks out the incinerator. Seems like wherever you find the masked man, those dancing girls aren't far behind. Lucky guy. Must be the mask. An assistant turns the valve. Let's fire it up. Get a load of those flames. I have a feeling that this trick is gonna be a real gas. And what magic trick would be complete without handcuffs? Here's a regulation pair, right on cue. Yeah, that'll hold him. The magician steps into the incinerator and takes one last look around before the girls turn up the heat. The lid is lowered into place. That's over 300 pounds of solid steel. 
he couldn't let that be tried. The assistant returns with the torches. What a way to light up a room. Notice that you can see all the way underneath the incinerator. Some more gas. We're ready to party. The flames fill the incinerator and burst out from under the lid. The masked magician goes out in a blaze of glory. Is this the end of our magician? I don't think so. Sorry, all you magicians out there. It's not going to be that easy to snuff out our leading man. Here are the secrets. The cremation is an extremely dangerous illusion. When the flames explode inside the incinerator, the temperature actually does rise to 3,000 degrees. Enough to get anybody hot under the collar. To understand how this illusion is pulled off, first take a look behind these innocent looking crates and meet our not so innocent stagehands waiting for their cue. The magician climbs in and the lid is secured. Meanwhile, a secret panel concealed in one of the crates pops open and a metal track is slid into place. Out front, the assistants wave their torches to buy some time and distract us from what's going on behind the incinerator. Then a conveyor belt slides out on the track into the incinerator, forming a bridge for an easy escape. The incinerator conceals all the action from the audience. Meanwhile, the magician ducks out a secret trap door in the back of the incinerator and climbs onto the conveyor belt, just as the assistants are about to light the fire. He could be reduced to ashes if he doesn't get out in time. He's pulled to safety by the stagehands, just seconds before the flames explode. Case closed. But what about the skeleton that's smoking in the bottom of the incinerator? Concealed in the lid is a secret compartment that holds a prop skeleton dressed in a tattered masked magician costume. Happy Halloween. Once the magician is out of the incinerator, the assistant turns a control lever, releasing the skeleton. The flames are lit. The skeleton is revealed. And the masked magician appears to be toast. But we know better, now that we know the secrets. Coming up, who is he and why did he do it? It won't be long before the mask comes off and the truth comes out. But first, how does the masked magician get his head chopped off and live to tell about it? The secret when we return. Now for a deadly illusion known as the spike torture. The torture chamber is filled with 26 stainless steel spikes. The spikes are two feet long. They're very real. And very sharp. Looks like this is gonna be a sticky situation. Even the masked magician wouldn't tempt fate with a dangerous trick like this, so he's found a willing stand-in, his beautiful assistant. She knows the drill. A little hypnosis and she's ready for anything. Hey, this guy's good. What's his secret? The assistant steps into position and is secured with shackles that are welded to the steel wall of the chamber. Hypnosis or not, this girl's pretty brave. Let's peek through the window. She's still there, still breathing, still beautiful.
Looks like she might be having some second thoughts. Too late. The magician is ready to begin the painful procedure. The machine is set in motion. Once the button is pushed, there's no way to stop it. Not even by screaming. But the screams wouldn't last long because the force of the spikes is enough to cause instant death. Good thing he's got three other assistants. Ah, at last some penetrating television. We can see that the spikes are passing right through the assistant's body and are coming out the front of the torture chamber. Puncture perfect. The masked magician has done it again. So how did our lovely assistant avoid getting impaled by the spikes? Here's the secret. While all the spikes are extremely sharp, most of them pass through the torture chamber without ever touching the assistant. The spikes that do touch her have been specially rigged. Just as they are about to pierce her body, the sharp steel tips automatically retract into the shafts. The machine has been custom designed for this particular assistant's measurements. The tips have been preset to retract just centimeters from her body. But what keeps the shafts from crushing the assistant? They're not really moving. It's an optical illusion created by the other spikes that are moving around them. But if the tips simply retract, why do they seem to pierce the front of the torture chamber? The answer is easy. There's a matching set of spikes hidden in the front wall. Taking off the front panel, you can see that the phony set of spikes is lined up with the spikes that are supposedly being driven into the assistant's back. As the mechanism guiding the real spikes makes contact with the front wall, the phony set of spikes is pushed out, making it look like the assistant is being impaled. But looks can be deceiving. Now the masked magician will try to cheat death once more as he faces the razor-sharp blade of the guillotine. That's one way to make coleslaw. The magician enters dressed in the traditional condemned man's robes. The ladies bid their fond farewells and... Up he goes. Nice knowing you, masked man. His assistants strap him to a bodyboard to keep him from running away. No chance of that. He's scared stiff. His head is then locked in the metal restraint and his body is lowered into position beneath the blade. I assure you, this is a real guillotine. No shortcuts here. Next, his head is secured with the wooden stocks. He's not going anywhere. One last check on the restraints. And here comes the executioner. He's got his work cut out for him. I can't bear to watch. Is it over? Of course not. Not when the executioner is the mass magician. So how does he do it? 
Here's the secret. As the illusion begins, the magician makes his dramatic entrance, cloaked in the condemned man's robe. The costume should have been your first clue that something was up. Beneath the hood is a duplicate mask that covers the magician's everyday mask, and a head-shaped shell which takes the place of his real head. Without the robe, you can see that the magician is also wearing a form-fitting body cast. While it looks like the assistants are helping him get into position, they're really grabbing the shoulders of the fake body and separating it from the magician. Now watch the move without the robe in place. That's one way to skin a magician. Even though the magician is no longer inside the robe, the fake body holds his shape. The assistants strap it in place to keep the form and head in an upright position. But where does the magician go? Hidden in the platform is a spring-loaded trap door that allows him to escape. He's got plenty of room to drop down, turn, and continue down a slide that's built into the staircase. This cutaway view shows his movement through the stairs. Dead man sliding. At the bottom of the staircase, he slips out unnoticed. As the fake body is lowered into position, the magician puts on the executioner's robe and heads back up to the platform. The stage is set. The deadly blade severs the fake head, and the masked magician lives on. Pretty sharp, huh? Next, is the masked magician someone you know? Find out who he is and why he did it. But first, can the magician escape from this six-foot grave before his air runs out? The answer when magic's biggest secrets are finally revealed. It won't be long before our magician takes off his mask and reveals his true identity to the entire world. Who is he? Why did he do it? Don't ask me. Not even I know the secrets. Now the masked magician confronts one of man's darkest fears, being buried alive. Houdini performed this escape over 80 years ago. Legend has it that when he died, his body was buried in the coffin he used for this very escape. Let's hope the same thing doesn't happen tonight. The magician raps on the coffin to prove that it's solid. It's solid, all right. 200 pounds of ponderosa pine. He steps inside and sits down, hoping this won't be his final resting place. A blindfold is placed around his eyes. I wouldn't want to look either. His assistants shackle him inside the coffin with thick leather straps and heavy steel buckles. First his arms are pinned down by his sides, then his ankles are bound securely in place. Hold all calls. This guy's all tied up. The lid of the coffin is then nailed shut. Through the shatterproof plexiglass window, we can check on the magician's progress. Yep, he's still in there, along with only three minutes of oxygen. Better hurry. Here comes the crane. Nothing magical about that. It's just there to lower the masked man's coffin six feet into the cold and clammy ground. This is one secret he may take to the grave. One more check on the magician. Looks like there's no way out. At this point, he's been in the coffin for almost a minute. Even I'm getting a little claustrophobic. Down he goes. Next, the grave is filled with dirt. 6,000 pounds to be exact. 
Those shovels would take all day, so the girls get a little help from some heavy equipment. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Many magicians have died while attempting this escape. Let's not make it one more. By this point, the magician is probably feeling a little lightheaded. If he panics, it's all over. Let's hope he keeps his cool. The magician has now been down there for two minutes. And the girls keep right on shoveling to fill that six-foot grave. He should be out of the restraints by now. If not, we'd better start looking for a new magician. By now, the air in the coffin is almost gone. To conserve his energy, the magician must control his breathing and lower his heart rate. That won't be hard. He's probably half dead by now anyway. Another 2,000 pounds of dirt. That's a big hole. I assure you that the magician is still under the ground. Remember, no camera tricks have been used to pull off this or any other illusion on tonight's show. We're just past three minutes, and still no sign of him. Rest in peace, masked man. But what's this? Could I be wrong? Is that our magician rising from the grave? It's him, all right. A little dirty and a little out of breath. But lucky to be alive. The masked magician has escaped an early grave. And the great Houdini couldn't have done it any better. Have you figured it out? Here are the secrets. The magician climbs into the coffin and his assistant strapped down his arms and legs. Those are impressive-looking restraints, except they're attached to the coffin with Velcro. Once the lid is nailed shut and he's lowered into the ground, the magician frees himself from the straps and slips out a trap door that's built into the side of the coffin. But where does he go? Next to the grave, a small wooden room is concealed in the ground complete with fresh air and a light. What, no TV? Well, the grave appears to be an eerie six foot deep hole in the ground. It's really an elaborate set piece made of wood then covered with fabric and dirt to make it look realistic. That's Hollywood. Inside the room is a sliding shelf that pushes out into the grave. This shelf about two feet beneath the surface will provide the step the magician needs to climb up out of the grave. As the first load of dirt is being poured into the hole, he re-enters the grave, slipping through a secret panel. He pulls himself onto the shelf and waits until the hole is filled before standing up and revealing himself. Of course, the audience thinks he's still in the coffin. When the dust clears, you can see that the magician, lightly covered in dirt, is actually crouched on the shelf. He takes his last gasp of breath while the final load of dirt fills the grave. Inside the room, a stagehand nervously stands by with oxygen should anything go wrong. It will be almost two full minutes before the magician will be able to take another breath of air. 
With all that weight crushing his lungs, there is a real danger of suffocation. After what must seem like an eternity for the magician, the hole is finally filled and it's time for his dramatic reappearance. A suspense-filled pause and the masked magician stands up on the shelf. He slowly pulls himself out of the ground. First one hand appears, then the other. Finally, his whole body. And though he badly needs air, our magician stands proud at his accomplishment. When we return, the moment that angry magicians have been waiting for. Finally, he takes off his mask and explains why he did it. But first, we'll reveal how to pull off one of magic's most dangerous illusions. The Death Trap. For his next trick, all our magician needs is his thumb, some pins, and a handkerchief. A little hocus pocus helps too. He covers his thumb with the handkerchief and, after a few deep breaths to steady his nerves, drives a pin straight into his thumb. Ouch. That's gotta hurt. Homemade acupuncture. Stick around, he's got a few more pins up his sleeve. He now has five pins embedded in his thumb. How much pain can this human pin cushion possibly endure? The pins come out. And there's the thumb, good as new. Did you figure it out? Here are the secrets. Hidden beneath the handkerchief is a carrot. No, it's not for his rabbit. It's part of the trick. When the magician draws the handkerchief over his hand, he secretly places the carrot in his fist, making it look like his thumb. Here it is again. Catching on. The pins go into the carrot. And you wondered why there was no blood. Now all the magician has to do is remove the handkerchief with the carrot hidden inside and accept his applause. Pretty tricky, huh? Now for one of the most terrifying illusions ever attempted, the death trap. The masked magician will try to escape while suspended upside down above this 30-foot tower of flames and blazing spikes. Good luck. He gives the cue to turn up the heat on the spikes, making his escape even more dangerous. That fire sure is hot. The magician lies down on a ladder. Not the most comfortable place to take a snooze, but that's not what he has in mind. His assistants secure him to the ladder using sturdy straps. He can't move an inch. Buckle up for safety. A heavy blanket is wrapped around both the magician and the ladder, then bound by more straps. Getting out won't be easy. Looks like these girls have done this before. An assistant douses the blanket with water to protect the magician if he gets too close to the flames. The ladder is then attached to a crane 
that will lift it 40 feet above the ground. Once in the air, the masked magician has only the flaming spikes to break his fall. Only Superman could survive this one. A little more water. Then it's up, up, and away. The ladder is hoisted into the air. Once above the tower, the magician will have just a few seconds to escape before he plunges down onto the blazing spikes. If something goes wrong, we may have to check his dental records to find out who he really is. To avoid becoming a flaming shish kebab, the magician must free himself from his restraints and climb down the ladder to the ledge of the tower. That'll be tough. Remember, beneath that blanket, he's hanging upside down. He's pretty close to the flames. Hope the girls used plenty of water. Uh-oh, something's gone terribly wrong. I don't think that was part of the flight plan. That can't be good. But wait, who's that in the window? You guessed it, the masked magician. Looks like our mystery man has done it again. So how did the masked magician escape from the fiery death trap? Here are the secrets. As the illusion begins, the magician is strapped securely to the ladder. The restraints are real, and they're pulled tight. But what you don't see is that the ladder is actually built in two parts. The top is fitted with a hinge that allows it to open easily, lifting the straps and freeing our magician. As the assistants raise the blanket, he rolls off of the ladder and into this ordinary looking tool chest. The front of the box is really a trap door that allows our magician to secretly escape into a hidden compartment. But if the magician wasn't strapped to the ladder, then how did it look like he was lifted into the air? Simple. Concealed in the blanket that the assistants used to wrap the ladder is a dummy, sewn right into the fabric. First, the assistants raise the front of the blanket to hide the magician's escape. Next, the back of the blanket, with the dummy inside, is folded over and then strapped tight. It looks like the magician, but he's no dummy to try a stunt like this. One more thing. The water that the assistants pour on the blanket to supposedly protect our magician, it's really gasoline, assuring the audience of a flaming finale. Here you can see an assistant pull the tool chest away as the ladder is being raised into the air. Once out of sight, our magician climbs out and hurries into the warehouse, where he races up two flights of stairs and prepares for his dramatic reappearance. Meanwhile, the ladder is purposely smashed into the fiery tower and the dummy bursts into flames, just as planned. Hearing the crash, he steps into the window, and the masked magician has done it again. Next up, the secret that the whole world wants to know, as we expose the true identity of the masked magician. Find out why he broke the magician's code, when magic's biggest secret is finally revealed. Now it's time for the biggest secret of all, our final reveal the unmasking of our magician. This is not a trick. For the first time, you will actually hear the magician's voice and see who's been hiding underneath that spooky mask. Time for the unveiling. Good evening. During the past year, I have shown you how some of magic's most famous illusions are secretly performed. I have done this under the guise of a masked face and an assumed name. This has led to a great deal of speculation about who I really am. Well, tonight, the time has come for me to remove the mask, 
because I have something very important to share with you. There isn't enough time to tell you the whole story, but I will say that the journey here has been amazing. I'm not revealing my identity because of all of the controversy surrounding these specials or because of the pressure that I'm receiving from my fellow magicians. I face you tonight because of my love for magic and to tell you why I chose to reveal these age-old secrets. In recent years, magic has taken a back seat to movies, video games, and other forms of high-tech entertainment. I was afraid that magic was going to be forgotten. I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to rekindle that sense of wonder that we all felt when we saw our first magic show. I wanted to get people excited about magic again. Do you remember our first television special last year? The next day, at work, at school, and around the dinner table, people were buzzing with excitement. For the first time in a long while, magic was center stage again. I began to work professionally when I was just 13 years old and put on magic shows for kids in nearly every school in town. In these performances, I didn't just perform magic, I showed them how to make their own tricks and they loved it. I discovered that knowing a few secrets made kids love magic even more. It made them feel a part of it. Did I hurt these kids by letting them in on these tricks? I don't think so. Can you honestly say that you've been hurt by watching these television shows? The truth is, you probably love magic more now than ever before. Now you feel a part of it too. It doesn't hurt the art of magic when the audience is in on a trick, because the secret is a small part of it. The real magic is in the performance. The best magicians like David Copperfield, Lance Burton, and Penn and & Teller are the true artists. They lead their audience through a wide range of emotions, from laughter to fear to sheer amazement. Every magician aspires to be that great, including me. Valentino, the masked magician. Before I go, I'd like to leave you with this thought. It is my belief that the art of magic is for everyone. Not just a select few who call themselves magicians, but for every single one of you. And especially the kids, because it is you kids that are the future of magic. I'm happy to report that as a direct result of these specials, magicians everywhere have been letting go of their old tired tricks and moving forward creating bigger and better illusions, and taking magic where it has never gone before. And now it's time for me to move forward too. The next time you see me, I will be performing new and exciting illusions that have never been seen before. Illusions that will thrill and amaze you. I hope I have contributed in some small way to your enjoyment of magic. So until we meet again, remember that the magic is in all of us. Thank you, and good night. A final word when magic's biggest secrets returns. And there you have it. Now everyone knows who the masked magician really is. The truth has finally been told. And magic's biggest secret has finally been revealed. I'm Mitch Pileggi. Good night. <laughs>